In this video, I want to prove that a random walk is not weakly dependent. So it also doesn't satisfy that particular condition for its inclusion in linear regression. So we need to start off with what we found in the last video, which was the covariance between xt and xt plus h. Well, that was found in the last video to be equal to the variance of xt, which was just equal to t times sigma squared. Okay, then we need to derive the correlation of xt with xt plus h. Well, the correlation of xt with xt plus h is just defined as the covariance of xt with xt plus h, all divided through by the square root of the variance of xt times the variance of xt plus h. And if we substitute in for each of these things, we have that the numerator is just t times sigma squared, and then the denominator becomes t times sigma squared times t plus h sigma squared, because for the variance of x t plus h, we're basically just increasing t to t plus h, so it just becomes t plus h times sigma squared. Okay, and if we do a little bit of mathematical cancelling here, we can actually cancel the sigma squared. So that's going to come out from the top and from the bottom because these two bottom terms here, even though there's a square root of sigma squared, when I multiply them together, I'm going to get sigma squared overall. So we have that the covariance of xt with xt plus h is equal to t divided through by the square root of t times t plus h which we can actually write a little bit neater if we actually cancel a power of t with t to the half. So we have that this is equal to the square root of t divided through by t plus h. And remember that for a process to be weakly dependent, we require that the correlation between xt and xt plus h, so I'm just going to write that as the correlation h, has to tend to zero as h tends to infinity. Does this correlation here necessarily satisfy that? Well, if we were to fix t and then let h go to infinity, it looks like this correlation would go towards zero. But the problem with this correlation is that we can always choose some t, which is arbitrarily large, ar arbitrarily large rather, such that the correlation between xt and xt plus h doesn't go to zero. And sort of strictly, this doesn't meet the condition for a process to be weakly dependent because the correlation does not go to zero fast enough. 